Hello, I've recently received another email, this one here. Hey Matthias, hope you're doing well. Uh, we are super pumped to inform you that we have just launched a new AI based tool, which is called AI Writer that should help students uh, with their academic writing essays, dissertations and so on. There's a link to this tool. And um, yeah, the idea of this video is to try this out a little bit and see if it's useful or not. And there's also a reference to some other document with AI writer key pointers. And hopefully I have also yes, opened this up here on my computer. So yeah, enhance your ideas with SciSpace AI writer. So the key features is essay writing assistance, create outlines. Uh, from my point of view, I'm not sure if you know, we will come back to this point later, if you if you know what you're writing, you should be able to create some outline yourself from my point of view. And um, having having a good structure for your work also is very helpful for your writing. So I, I'm, I'm not sure if uh, AI tools can really help with this. This is from my point of view, something that you, that you should do yourself if you really know what you're writing about. Generate opposing arguments maybe sometimes it can help if you if you have a too closed view um, for example ai tools can be quite good in getting being creative getting creative ideas so why not um, fine-tuning improve the clarity and impact i'm not sure fine-tuning the language for sure um, enhance grammar checks I'm, I'm totally fine with this. So if English is not your native language, uh, not your mother tongue, then um, these large language models can be a great, great help in improving grammar, um, correct spelling mistakes and so on. Formatting, I would say total nonsense. If you do scientific writing, um, honestly, you use LaTeX for writing and LaTeX will do all the formatting issues for you. So who, who wants to have AI based essay formatting, no one. So this is from my point of view, total nonsense, but okay. Um, paraphrasing, yeah, to be honest, I'm not a fan of paraphrasing because you take a foreign text, uh, you take the ideas of this foreign text and you just reformulate them. So it will still not be your own ideas. Um, so yeah, of course, la large language, uh, base tools can do this for you but I would say it's still not um, ho honestly thinking about other ideas if you if you read three different um, papers on a certain topic then put them away and make up your mind what what is from your point of view for your research project the most important thing from these three papers and write them down in a new text um, it's much much more mental effort for you also uh, instead of just simple effortless paraphrasing so this is something that ai tools can probably do very well but um yeah it's it's liking having it's it's like having a, um, an electric motorcycle and then using this for training right it, it won't help you in, in exercising and getting any better and stronger so Mm, yeah, you, you can probably do this, but it won't help you a lot. And multi-language support, um, for sure, AI-based large language model tools can really, really, really help you in uh, writing something in your own language, transferring it, translating it to a different language. Of course, still you should somehow do basic checks if the output um, is correct and still telling the right story. Okay, and so then you can cite from a couple of million research papers. Um, I'm not sure if this high number is really the important thing here. Um, if you are doing research in a specific field, there might be a hundred, maybe a thousand relevant research papers for your own study, and they will be all from a very limited number of journals, magazines, conferences, and so on. So I, I don't think that you need this huge, huge database. <laughs> auto complete your thoughts uh, this is probably what i will try out i'm i'm not really how should it know my thoughts and how should it auto complete them i mean it, it it can predict something based on what i've already written but it 
cannot look into my mind and auto-complete my thoughts. So this is very questionable. Uh, it's still very promising, but very questionable from my point of view. And uh, save notes anytime, anywhere. I, I don't know why I should have an AI-based tool to, to keep some notes. There, there are lots of tools to keep notes. Um, basically, every modern smartphone has a note-taking app and you can sync them from one to each other and so on. So hmm. um, this is something that I would not like to have. And once again, export with no loss formatting. If you use LaTeX, you don't care about the format um, and it will always look exactly as you intended it uh, if you use a good LaTeX template. Okay, so with this, um, let's have a short look onto the platform, uh, which looks like this. And there's also some video preview here, how it works. Um, yeah, so you can see that something is written and you can just expand it. Um, yeah, and add citations. Of course, if you just add some citation to have a citation, from my point of view, it's also not a very good idea. For sure, you should then also read the paper, uh, at least the abstract, the main part and the summary of the paper that you cite in your work to get an idea if this is really, really relevant for your um, for your work and for your paper uh, report, thesis, whatnot. Okay, so I've just shortly checked it before. Um, I'm, I think I'm logged in here into my account. And if I click on start writing, I get something like, a, let's say, Google Docs, um, some kind of online editor. I can type something here. Uh, I can format stuff. As said, I don't care about the format. Um, I think here are other tools that I've tried to deal with or try to discuss and explain in other videos. And um, quite important, um, I have only 200 AI words in the free version that I'm currently using, which is, of course, okay, 200 words is a, is a long abstract. Uh, so we won't be able to write a very long abstract. Okay, so because this is very limited, because before I will dive into this, I've also opened up ChatGPT here um, to test some other stuff. And um, once again, the topic that I will be using for writing here is my own research topic that I deal with since uh, 15 years. It's electromagnetic reverberation chamber. So I would say I'm quite an expert in, on, on this. Um, and so I will try to let the AI writer here write a short abstract, a short text, a short paragraph on the pros and cons, the advantages and disadvantages of reverberation chambers. And before we do this, uh, I would like to try something out with ChatGPT because I think it's very similar. And um, here I, I just have more words to test because um, I think, or yeah, I um, um, these, all other language models are, as it said, just language models. So they, they might have a problem with causation and correlation. And to test this out, uh, just to see how, how good um, such tools behave in this, I've written some, some sentences, a very, very simple one. So I will open, a, open them up first. I think this is this document here. Yeah. So um, very, very simple example, just from our daily life that has nothing to do with electromagnetic compatibility and reverberation chambers. But when it rains, the road gets wet, right? When, when this happens, then this will follow. So the, this is some clear causation. Um, and there's, there's, of course, also some correlation. Um, but the, the question is, if you turn the sentence around and, and ask the road gets wet when, um, does ChatGPT or does do these AI-based tools then say when it rains? Because um, when it rains, the road gets wet. This makes sense. But if you turn it the other way around and say the road uh, when the road is wet, it's raining, um, 
I mean, the road can be wet also for other reasons. So this is a little bit the question um, that I would like to try out. And so I've, I've other sentences here that have the same, if you do something like this and this, then this and this will happen. But this can happen also for other reasons, except the one that I'm, uh, that I have written down here. So this is the idea of trying this out a little bit. Uh, so we will reformulate the sentences a little bit and ask um, ChatGPT, uh, please complete the following sentence. And then um, say, the road gets wet when or if. And let's see what it does. And it says, okay, the road gets wet if it rains, but also if water is spilled, if there's condensation from fog or, uh, fog or humidity, which from my point of view is a quite good answer. It's not only the road is wet when it rains, but there are also other reasons that could lead uh, to this outcome. So let's try it out with um, these sentences here. So, the field distribution in the mode stir chamber changes if we move the mode stirrer, but it could also happen if we change the frequency, for example, if we change the position of some antenna uh, inside the chamber, um, if we move a wall of the chamber, something like this, if we change the electromagnetic boundary conditions of the resonator. So we'll do the same and say, please complete the following sentence. And the sentence is the field distribution in the mode stereo chamber changes if. And let's see what we get. So it changes if the stereo position is altered. This is what I had here. If you move the mode stereo, if you change the chamber geometry or contents are modified, uh, contents, okay, or the operating frequency is adjusted. So quite, quite good, exactly what I said before. Um, not too bad, not too bad. Um, so um, this is qu quite good, quite good reasoning. So we can continue and say the measured field strength decreases if we reduce the input power. But um, yeah, we could also, for example, um, increase the loading of the chamber or we could just maybe also move the field probe to a position where there is more destructive interference between the waves um, like here. So let's see what it says to this. Um, so the please complete the following sentence. And the sentence is the measured field strength decreases if and let's see what it answers if uh, if the distance from the source increases, this is this is ah, this is unfortunately a little bit wrong because in a reverb chamber, in a mode chamber, you have so many reflections that you don't care about the source distance. Obstacles or absorptive, absorptive materials are introduced, or if the input power is introduced. So I would say this is of course totally correct. This is also correct. If you have obstacles in a reverb chamber, the waves due to the many reflections would find their way around. So this is half true. But this is quite good. And it's struggling a little bit here. So let's check for the last sentence. The measured field strength changes if we move a field probe in the chamber. But uh, it could also happen, once again, we rotate the stirrer, uh, we change the frequency, um, something like this, we change the input power. So once again, please complete the following sentence. The measured field strength, uh, let's say, um, in a reverberation chamber or in a mode stereo chamber. Ah, but okay. Um, yeah, um, ChatGPT has a point because in the in the previous sentence we did not really state that in a reverberation chamber. So let's edit once again. The measured field strength um, in a mode stereo chamber decreases if, and so now we should not get this source increase obstacle thing anymore. So it increases, decreases if the quality factor is reduced, if the input power is decreased, if the stereo position causes destructive interference or additional absorptive materials are introduced into the chamber. 
very, very good. Um, I mean, this is this is uh, very, very good. So, last trial with this one, the measured field strength in a mode steric chamber changes. If dot dot dot. So, and now, um, yeah, we should get something. Um, we move the stirrer, we move the field probe. Um, source power is very right. Okay, it does not. It does not tell what what I had originally said here. If we move the field probe around, but if we move the stirrer, if we change the frequency, if the force. Okay, not too bad. Um, so then I have. Yeah, two sentences that are not really um, correlation or causation, but that should check general understanding. So a mode steric chamber for radiated electromagnetic compatibility or EMC measurements is comparable in our everyday life with or to a, and the answer is a microwave oven. If you have a microwave oven at home, it also behaves like this resonant cavity. So let's see if ChatGPT knows this. Um, a mode steel chamber is comparable in our everyday lives to a microwave oven. Very good. And so let's check the last sentence. Um, in order to build an efficient mode stirrer to generate as many independent field distributions as possible, one must. Yeah, and the answer here as an expert I would say is uh, we need to have um, a large object larger than a wavelength. Um, it needs to move and it needs to be as asymmetric as possible. And yeah, I said it needs to be out of metal. So there should be a large surface area that reflects the waves and that changes then the wave pattern, the electromagnetic field pattern, the modes inside the chamber. So let's see what ChatGPT answers. Um, must be complex shape, you know, complex, I would say more asymmetric, but complex, optimize its site placement to interact effectively with the chamber modes, can move or rotate in a way that maximizes the randomness of the field distribution. Quite correct, not too bad answer. Okay, so um, JGPT is already quite good in this um, advanced reasoning, um, not, not too much mixing correlation and causation and um, having quite a good clue what is the correct answer to these questions. Okay, so let's go back to this AI writing tool here. And so what I will do um, is, or what I've already done, I've written, and I need to find this file here. I think it's this one um, once again. So I have written with this headline, a very short um, paragraph about advantages and disadvantages of reverberation chambers. So it's an alternative measurement environment for electromagnetic compatibility tests. It's a shielded enclosure. You can do radiated emission and immunity tests. And due to the shielding, you don't interfere with ambient signals and systems. And there are no absorbers. So as an anechoic chambers, so uh, we have a resonator and we get high field strengths with small input power, which is advantages if you want to reach high field strengths for immunity tests. And the field is strongly inhomogeneous. To get it homogeneous and isotropic, we need a mode stirrer, this large metallic object that moves around. And for emission measurements, we can measure total radiated power um, of an equipment under test. And this allows us for robust tests for high frequencies in electrical large equipment. And we could add, okay, another disadvantage. Unfortunately, there are no um, emission limits for this measurement. So you can measure total radiated power, but there's no limit for this that you can, can compare with. Okay, so 
let's say this is my benchmark. This is my what I as an expert have written on this topic. Um, I'm not sure how many words this is, but we can count this here. So this is 100, I think in the, uh, what I've selected here, it's 142 words. So it should be within the 200 word AI limit. And um, it's definitely about the pros and cons of reverberation chambers for EMC tests. So let's put it inside here. Uh, this is the headline. This is what I have written myself. And so now let's see what the autocomplete feature here does for us. And I'm not sure how it works. I think I have to press for commands. Um, yeah, I think it's, it's adding something automatically. And uh, it, it suggests, okay, real-world chambers are widely used uh, due to their unique ability to create a controlled environment for evaluating the performance of devices under various conditions. <laughs> okay, so if I press tab, I can accept this. Okay, I have now about, I've already used a quarter of my words. Um, one significant advantage is the ability to simulate real-world scenarios, allowing for comprehensive testing across a range of frequencies and polarizations. Um, okay, now it's now it's once again gone. So how can I how can I get it back? I've just clicked. Um, okay, so I, what I will do is I will just press tab until we have reached the word limit. Let's say. Okay. Um, First sentence, okay, let, let's press another tab. So first sentence, I would agree, it's some kind of a controlled environment. At the end, you cannot control it too much because it's still highly random. Uh, you never know what will happen if you rotate the stirrer. You know the average very, very well and the maximum values and so on. You know the statistics very well, but it's like throwing a dice. If you throw a dice, once and if you throw it a second time you, you don't know what will happen the third time and the fourth time and so on but if you throw it a hundred times you you will know okay the the average value the expectancy value for a good dice would be 3.5 um, so it's the same a little bit here you know the average but you don't know what will happen um, exactly for the next stereo position or the next frequency Okay, everything has advantages and disadvantages. This is some bogus sentence, I would say. One significant advantage is the capability to simulate real-world scenarios. I, I would not really agree because it's a highly, highly resonant um, cavity with lots of reflections in a, in a real-world scenario, except you are in an aircraft fuselage or a satellite enclosure on a large metallic ship. You won't have these um, this many reflections and this high quality factor environment. Okay, comprehensive range of uh, or testing across a range of frequencies and polarizations, but at the end in the reverb chamber, you don't know about the polarization. You, it, it's random. It comes from all polarizations and directions. Testing multiple devices simultaneously. Who wants to do this? Um, no, no one. No one does this. Um, I don't know too many EMC laboratories. Of course, it could be done, but it's not really a practical thing. Uh, we have still 117 words left. On the downside, reverberation chambers. I will press tab first. Can introduce challenges related to measurement accuracy, complex variability in results. Hmm. You have the same in any choic chambers in GTM cells and other things. Additionally, the initial setup and calibration requires careful attention to detail. I would agree, which can be time consuming and resource intensive. Every initial setup and calibration and validation um, is like this. This is also some, yeah, some sentence that cannot really be wrong. Okay, I have once again clicked. We have 74 words left. Furthermore, the environmental conditions within the chamber must be meticulously controlled to ensure consistent results. <laughs> yeah. I mean, usually reverb chambers are in uh, in buildings and you never have these large fluctuations in temperature, let's say from minus 10 degrees Celsius to 60 degrees Celsius. It will be always around 20, maybe in the summer, 30 degrees Celsius. and I would say the reverb chamber does not care if the temperature or, of course, it's if, if you have very humid air, 
it will create additional losses inside the air. Um, so you should care about this, but usually you don't care about temperature. Okay, we have 48 words left. Uh, moreover, ongoing maintenance periodic recalibration are essential. Hmm. These factors highlight the importance of a well-planned test strategy. I think this is now just blah, 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 blah stuff. Um, we have zero words left. In addition, training personnel to operate is crucial. Hmm. Yeah, so I would say um, now I think we have 200 words, 238 words. Hmm. I would say if you if you just read once again if you if you have no clue what the reverb chamber is um, and if you let the tool write something of course you get something that somehow deals with the topic something is right something is not too wrong but there's also lots of not necessarily important or really related stuff um, yeah so if you do it the classical way, you read some sources like books, other research papers, Wikipedia articles. I think what is written here um, or what I have written as an expert um, is from my point of view, may maybe I'm biased, but from my point of view, it's, it's much, much, much better um, than what is written here. Um, so... What, what happens here with this, you, you, you write a sentence, you write half a sentence and then you let it complete, um, seems to be much better than what you just, it's adding and adding and adding and adding stuff. Um, I don't know, maybe I've done it here in the wrong way. Maybe I've stopped it in between and said, let's correct this and let's do this the right way. But I mean, at the end then, I think I've not, I've not um, stopped the time how much, how long it took me to write this, but I would say not more than 10 minutes or so, right? It's mean, just 150 words. Um, if you type quickly, if you have this already quite nicely in your mind, what you would like to say, uh, then also writing down stuff goes very quickly. Uh, of course, here it goes even quicker, but at the end, it's, from my point of view, not really helpful. So to summarize, I've prepared, I think, a nice flowchart so the question before using such tools is that you should ask yourself is, do you have something to tell? Really, uh, I mean, do you have a message? Do you have a story that you want to tell someone else? If the answer is yes, then I would say, write, write it down, write as much of that story of what you would like to tell down by yourself. If you are not sure about the right words, the right grammar, the right sentence structure, no problem, write it down in head words, uh, write it down in, in, in shorter sentences, and, and then still you can use some AI tool to um, like finish the language. So if you have nothing to tell, then just don't write. Um, of course, there are sometimes cases where, but where, where you need to write something uh, because you study something and you need to write an essay. So. Um, you don't have something to tell, but still you need to write something. Then the question is, will it read someone? Like your supervisor, um, lecturers, uh, university staff. And if the answer is no, um, you need to write something, but at the end you know it won't read, no one will read this. Okay, then I would say use these AI-based writing tools. Mm, no one will be harmed, no one will care. If it will read someone, okay, then you have to ask yourself, does the answer need to be correct? Um, I mean, does, do lives depend on this? If, if you are writing something wrong, right? I mean, there's this example of AI-based books about um, fungi, yeah? and people go to the forest to collect uh, fungi and or champignons or something like this um, and, um, and eat them. Um, and the book written by AI said it's no problem you can eat them but in reality they are poisonous and people will die or will get sick then it's a huge problem so you, you should ask yourself does the text need to be correct and if it needs to be correct then once again I would say 
write as much of, uh, as, of, of the text um, as you can by yourself. Um, and okay, if you, you need to write a text, it might someone will might read it, but it, it does not be really correct at the end. Then I would say, okay, AI based, use some AI based writing tool. Why not? Um, no one will really care and no one will be harmed. The question then is, yeah, so for this text that I have, no, the, the text that was generated here, am I the author of this text? I, I, I would say no. Um, I'm, I'm probably not the author of this text. I'm the author of this headline. And then I click tap, 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 tap. And uh, some AI tool has written this text for me. Um, of course, I could say I'm the author of this and no one can prove me wrong because th there is no way to distinguish from the result um, how the process of writing this was, right? I, I, I could take this and say it's my own text even if I have not written this. Um, I, I would not do this. And so th this is also the question that you should ask yourself. Um, I mean, here the text here is a text that is possibly wrong and that no one cares about. And do you want to be the author of a text that is possibly wrong and that no one cares about? I would not like to be.